Right, this is going to be a brief commentary on depression. Uh, my thoughts on depression and, some, and commentary and thoughts on the... If anybody saw the mental health programme, I um, can't remember what channel it was on. I think it was BBC One. And the components were um, famous celebrities and some invited guests from the mem members of the public and one counsellor I believe or one anchor man acting as the uh, orchestrator, the master of cer ceremonies and um, the Prince, uh, Prince William was the ambassador for uh, men uh, the the promoting of mental health awareness, which is uh, commendable in, with concerning the amount of suicides of young men these days and uh, the, the depressing world. And I wanted to cover some grounds of um, depression, the causes of the depression, and the depressed world. It's um, no surprise that uh, people get depressed, whether you're a born again Christian or in the body of Christ, or you're you're one of the lost world, uh, an unbeliever. You don't believe in God, or you don't believe in Jesus Christ, or you just don't care. And the if I can remember the celebrities, I think what the footballers it was basically footballers on a on a football ground. I'm not sure what football ground. And there was Thierry Henry and um, Peter Crouch and uh, Tottenham Hotspur player, I can't remember his name. Slipped my mind. And the Prince of, uh, Prince of Wales, uh, Prince William. Uh, I'm not sure if it, no, he's not the Prince of Wales, but Prince William. And the four, I think it was four members of the public who've all, all, from different walks of life who've experienced depression. And the the main focus was uh, really, it's broken down into two halves. In, uh, speaking to the celebrities in a group and then speaking individually to the members of the public, why they didn't all do them in one group there's a separation between the celebrities, their experience, and then the members of the public were invited to give their experiences. So there's all different reasons. Uh, some was loss, uh, some was uh, just the general apathy in the world of the uh, carrot held up and your failure to reach your your dream or your goal. So there's a, a few reasons for depression. Uh, Prince Prince William was uh, his his experience was a bit a bit about the grief of his losing his mother at such a young age, and his empathy with um, other people who've experienced loss and his his experience with depression, and his initiative and drive is, I think it was well intended. It's well hearted. I, I would say, but I don't know. I don't know the man's heart. But my my gripe with the whole thing was that the, the uh, Prime Minister May also was, um, and even David Cameron used the um, used the political lip service. Oh, we must do more about mental health. So. The, the prince is uh, and celebrities are take, seem to be taking matters into their own hands. So I don't know what the drive is behind it. But the main the main buzzwords were um, repeated quite a few times through the program was uh, to talk about it, to share it with somebody, with your mates or something. Well, that's all well and good, but you can share with the wrong people and make it make things worse. You, you could be surrounded by a, a load of narcissistic people and uh, have no empathy or no sympathy for your sharing your depression. So that, that 
that encouragement wasn't guarded so it was just oh you you should sh share it you should really share it and everyone sharing their positive experience of sharing it of unloading it wh which is good in the moment but later on it can when you're left to yourself your depression can return and you, if you're sharing it with the wrong people uh, it's, you potentially can do uh, do more damage so that that was a uh, not considered and the other one was go and go and go and seek help and and again everybody gave their testimony of the point where they decided realized that they needed help one gentleman was uh, just anger and uh, emo I think it was emotional breakdown um, emotional from a, a grieving a loss or something and his anger burst and he freed a, his family a dining room table up in the air or something like that and uh, he said his point was it scared him so much and it, his family was scared so he that was the the turning point of him knowing, uh, coming out of denial and realizing he had a he had a problem and then he his testimony of going to see a doctor or something so the promotion was uh, talk about it and then go go and get help now you've got the celebrities you've got the royal family's drive or the prince william's drive you've got the mainstream media's drive and the popular I celebrity idols and sharing there and promoted on a one-way media to the world telling them if you've got a mental health problem which, which could be caused it could be um malicious it could be you you could be given these mental health symptoms through harass electronic harassment so you, it could be a covert niche of people that um are being tested on uh quite cruelly that that's um that's a reality then you've got um so you've got that you've got the world and all the all the anorexic problems all caused by the mainstream popular culture and television the media which seeps through into all that everybody follows suit the whole world follows the Pied Piper so it, it the whole the whole human race changes its direction as a, a mass and and whether you like it or not that's the the main current it is popularizing something whether it's abortion whether it's um, this or that or whatever the thing of the moment is so the whole world's looking up to this unrealistic because you know we can't all be famous we can't all be rich and powerful that like the lord jesus said there's always going to be poor people because of the obviously because of the the main disparity and injustice in the world and the the kind of people who covet that and don't don't want to share well, they have no empathy for sharing. They have no um, comprehension of what it's like to be in that situation, and and their value of themselves is uh, narcissistic and sociopathic. So they're sociopaths, and they they have no no care for people, and uh, that's kind of the mentality in in medical science. I'm not saying all medical scientists are like that, but that's the main drive that's the main um, twist and that's the main pressure behind it because when, when you're on the end of it you, you, you tell it isn't it isn't for your best interest the world it's set up for uh, mammon it's set up by the devil it's uh, to lead people off astray to break up families to to promote the antichrist spirit that that's the drive of the world so the world is going to be depressed if it is putting its values on um, a lifestyle or the golden carrot and um, the people under the on the bottom of the seesaw feel left out and feel you know the, they feel the imbalance so they become depressed and uh, self-conscious and and they're preyed on and they're walked over and exploited and kept in kept in the uh, wine press and their chances of ever getting above water is um, incrementally getting harder and harder for each generation they always talk about oh, 
put in this generation, right? There's a whole wake of generations that have been under the same yoke and the same lies. Uh, Brexit um, has just been an exercise to show the world who's really in charge. The, you know, the, the government aren't in charge. Somebody else is driving the um, motive behind what was voted for not coming to fruit fruition because it, it's it's all been a lie. Uh, there's powers behind behind the scenes that aren't going to let Britain out of Europe. It seems, and you got the push for a referendum and another vote and all the the political spinning and the uh, divisions of the and the promotion of what's favoured, which is to go back uh, to go back into Europe. So democracy's been completely killed. Great Britain's. Um, got up to take a breath and got got reset on and stabbed it's uh our, na our nation is really in trouble and has been for a long time so that's why people are depressed and it's sin for the the lifestyle people that uh, lead um w when you're discouraged you you throw your hands up in the air and if you don't know you don't know the purpose of life you don't know the meaning of life you don't know the value of life and then you have no value for yourself or, or you're on the other end of the seesaw, you you're all self and you have no value for anyone else. So it creates this um, disparity between what's right and what's fair and what's uh, completely unfair. So that's why the world's depressed and then people get into pits of um, depression through abuse, through self abuse, through drug abuse, through whatever it is that they use to escape. And those things don't provide the right substance for the soul and spirit and the mind. So these people become depressed because they're empty. And then it, then they're in a spiral and they end up on the rocks. So depression is um, so many reasons. And then, then you have abuse. Abu you, have, uh, caught, you can cause depression by your own actions or, or you can become depressed by the, the actions of others. And then there's medical reasons for be, for depression. Um, the, the glands in your body that um, generate hormones uh, could cause can be you could be biologically uh, uh, faulty, and that can cause a, a clinical depression. So there's so many accounts of what causes depression. And so this uh, program was promoting, I'll go and seek help. But anyone who's uh, sought help and been encouraged to seek help is that the uh, media isn't following those people. Now you've got all these um, voluntary phone lines set up, which is a uh, it tackles one part of it. It, it makes uh, it, it makes people aware of um, other people's suffering, but it, it it's so smudged with. Um, there's no no clarity on the reasons of depression and uh, who, who's who and what's what. So you're encouraged to go for help, and then those people go for help, and there's a minority who don't get any help. It just makes it worse. And then my experience with myself and other and going through the system of other people is there's it, just no one there to meet people because they're overstressed, they're overburdened and they can't possibly cope, the hospital can't cope and a lot of these um, hospitals are, are packed, they're always packed and when one bed goes then it's filled up and I've, I've experienced that first hand. Um, I've worked independently for a private uh, mental health to help people get out the old warehouse system to get out of hospital and uh, into a their own place so they can uh, be supported with their own individual needs on a one-to-one -one basis. But that, that's all choked by regulation and the law, so it's all, it's all blurred. So, when, so these programs, it's all well and good, but it's not, it's not going the whole hog. Um, and it will, it's, to me it was all lip service. Um, and it go, it go sour because a lot, of, and and all the um, all the good results will be will get airtime. You see on the TV. Oh, look at the success 
look at the success of us, you know, and but you won't get any spotlight on the reality of the people who are going for help and not and it's not there to meet them. And they, they're even um so it's okay making these initiatives and and pr pr prime ministers and politicians speaking out against uh, oh waving the flag we need more mental health awareness um well the the horse is bolted and our our nation is under such strain and pressure the doctors are under pressure and they're fearful and they're compromised so all all this drive is going to further overburden the, the uh, NHS, NHS system. They're going to resent it because they're not going to be heard. And uh, you just see the news stories, you've got doctors um, speaking out of the reality of the circumstance and that's been promoted by over 20 years of uh, not having control, being pumped w w w that anyone can come into our country. And so, w our, we've not the nation hasn't cared for its own needs and the fruits are apparent so but that's the lost world and the whole world is under condemnation and uh, because it's the remedy for depression is jesus christ and repenting from sin and having a personal relationship to f understand what what your individual that individual person's depression is caused by um in the body of in the body of Christ, uh, depression is mainly the suffering, the sufferings of the world, the suffering living in an evil world, and and having a care for lost souls, and that that is a weight, that is a, a burden for any believer, because uh, they don't want anyone to perish. They want people to know Jesus Christ, but the world rejects rejects Jesus Christ. That's the suffering because it's the Lord's loss and that can make you depressed but the believer has the joy so you, the believer will suffer these things because we, we live in a corruptible body which is the flesh but we have the inner, the new man, the, inner, the Holy Spirit and the grace of God once we're justified and, we, and each day we have that, we pick up our cross and do all the things that we that keep us in the way that we can rejoice so we, we it's twofold you have that um the sufferings of the lord but he makes your burdens light so if any brother and sister in the body is um suffering with depression well you you're in good company because every, every everyone has a, a cloud pass passing over them and a, a, a whether that's on a daily basis in the current climate or but the remedy for depression is picking up your yeah, being rejoicing and doing uh, being a Berean and studying your scriptures and getting out and doing something positive for the Lord uh, the Great Commission that's one of the great in my life that's one of the best things for overcoming depression is having that to live for uh, my life my life without Christ would, I wouldn't want it I couldn't bear it, but with Christ, I I, I still got that um, those woundings and that pain, and, and if I'm not focused on that, it's gonna, it's just gonna open all that up again. So um, having the discipline, having that uh, reason to live for, to live for others, to live to serve the Lord, it is a remedy for my depression. So you, um, all people are depressed. Um, but there is a, um, a more niche reason for depression and that's um, coming from a really broken, abusive life and that, that, that is a bigger um, cross to bear because it's, all, it's with you every day, you carry your wounding every day and it can be opened up every day if you're not uh, doing the things you should do and you, you, you're not looking uh, keeping single to the Lord uh, bringing all your thoughts in, into subjection to Christ and, and and that's not easy for anybody there's so many distractions in the world there's so many things happening 
and each day you can you, you can wake up and you another day, uh, one day have a wonderful day wake up another day and you're you wake up in in the gutter and you feel absolutely awful and you may not feel like picking up your cross and you can uh, slip and then loop completely this sight and get caught away in the current and further wounded and there's a great analogy of the iceberg which is uh, used in to um, show uh, more serious meanings uh, bigger reasons under the under the surface and that that needs to be considered in somebody's life that so to work out with the Lord and the Holy Spirit and through study and through your own knowledge of your own life experience to filter out what what may be causing uh, depression and so there's so many layers it's so complicated and human human life and our, our makeup, our bodies, our souls, our minds are, are very, very complicated, and it's only the Lord who really understands what each, what each person's going through. So, if I can be an encouragement to anyone, is is to do those to do those simple things. To be thank, uh, I was reminded today to be thank, always to be thankful for all men, like First Timothy two and the first verse to be thankful for all men to pray for our church leaders to pray for our nation to pray for israel to pray just to pray for the whole world to pray for the free course of the gospel and to pray to pray always to pray for our brothers and sisters to pray for the brothers out in full-time ministries preaching the word and to pray for their ministries, pray for their encouragement, pray for their, for them to uh, be encouraged by hearing, hearing uh, people uh, being saved by what they're doing and to keep them on, pray for them to be delivered from violent and malicious intent and pray for, pray for the lost, pray for those people you witness to or, or wherever you are, pray, pray to be lifted pray to be you know more believing more faithful pray to be healed pray because your healing is um instant in christ but if you let go of christ you're back into your your flesh and your old to yourself and you can uh sink away so it's to pray and keep keep single and do those uh simple positive things and you may desire to consider or may think to consider you may have um, more underlying problems you weren't aware of and, and, and that me needs to be looked at and understand or consider all, all, all the areas or just ask the Lord to guide, guide your footsteps on a daily basis and within the area you're if you're what if you're if it's something you're looking into what if you're not feeling right and you you can't figure out why you can't get up or it's difficult perhaps there is something un perhaps you're you're carrying a wound you, you might not aware how how serious it is only the lord will know that and i had a, um i was carrying something i was completely unaware of and um it was only the holy spirit through uh line upon line and experience upon experience that that helped me realize brought me around to focus my attention to a very serious issue and uh, that that process helped me to come to an understanding and that that took um, bad experiences with um, going to doctors and, and looking for understanding but but not on my own back but in faith in the Lord and um, gleaning from what I did experience out of the the whole experience, what I, what, what I knew was true, because the Holy Spirit would touch upon that which was right, and where they were out of the way, they were just pinning the tail on the donkey. So you have to be careful who you put your trust in, if you're really seriously deciding to go and look for counselling or something. But uh, depression uh, can cause, if you, if you remain depressed for a long time, that can affect your whole metabolism, your whole biological makeup and you can set in that way it's like doing um, like being a smoker or, or an alcoholic or 
or a, any addiction it will leave a big hole you'll dig a hole and you'll keep digging it and digging it and that hole will remain and that can only be filled and, and healed by um, by the Lord and by grace and if you lose sight of that you can re-dig that reopen that hole and feel completely empty inside and and that that the consequences that um, affect your mind uh, and that can damn your progression even even if you're not if you're not saved it when you weren't saved it will it damns your progression and development and if you've got a serious uh, development problem you're arrested you, your development's been arrested quite seriously that's going to have effects on your your mental your brain your brain's development your mind's development so you may be seriously lacking in uh, in in certain knowledge. So if you if you need, uh, the Lord's got all knowledge. So he's the one to trust, and uh, he will bring you to an understanding and healing that you can that helps you get um, to get up and and, and keep going because it's better to to be doing something than doing nothing. So if you are lying on the side sidelines and you're crashed um I, I just encourage you to get up because the look and lift you up as though it, it, it's not there but that takes uh discipline and um a lot of m maybe a lot of trial and error a lot of getting back up and dusting yourself down once you've once you've fall, fallen or or given up or fallen fallen to the side or backslid into into a simple way or it may be that you're just um, you're, you're living as best as you can. You're living right, but you just um, can't put your finger on what it is. So the Lord can lift you up and put you on your feet to rejoice through any experience you're going through. But you have to put your faith and trust in in your Savior and in God. And the, um, the Holy Spirit will edify you when you the lord heavenly father will answer you when you call call out he will meet your needs if they're, they're right and they're sincere um so that's really what i wanted to cover uh, for depression and that uh, um it's a common thing we share we suffer with, with with everyone because we're all feeling the lord's suffering so if you consider the lord and put what he suffered it, it puts our sufferings into in, it's a little drops in the ocean he suffered we're we're blessed we should be thankful for our sufferings and that's a hard thing to do because we're selfish and in this generation this day and age we're coming from such a ripe the human race is so ripe in sin and iniquity that we are byproducts of that, we are biologically part of that, and that isn't going to ever change until we are uh, the the Lord takes us up and changes our corruptible bodies to be incorruptible. But but we first need His uh, His righteousness, His incorruptible spirit, which we have. But if we lose sight of that, we remain in our corruptible flesh and we go back to what we've always been. So if you've started your salvation in a wreck, you're always going to be that wreck. Now that may change, it, it depends on on the severity of it and, and other things on the side of it that come with it. They can, they can improve, but if you've got a serious uh, life injury or, or soul wound or... Um, Whatever the reason, and that's left you, in, 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 you know, right at the back. That's left you on the sidelines, and you don't, you can't manage it. The Lord can carry you, and pick you up, and put you on your feet, and build you up to become more resilient. But it, it may take. It's not always overnight. But each day we can experience that joy, and the more you practice in getting back up the more resilient you'll be and you'll allow the, the Lord to heal you and guide your footsteps and bring you back into line when you take your eye off the ball so you're not going to stray so far so if you've got a sin problem a backsliding problem or a serious wound and it causes you to lose sight and fall and backslide the, the Lord's the only remedy 
the Lord's the only way to overcome those uh, those needs. And uh, so, if that's you, if you've uh, given up and you've lost sight of that, uh, I'd encourage you to just hold on. And uh, if you're ever, if you feel like um, now, I I always feel like giving in and giving my I don't want to don't want to live. But that's my flesh. That's that's the the point I was saved in. I'm grateful for that now, but I still retain that. And I can still feel like that some days, although I would never kill myself. That's so, that would be selfish. And I, I, I love the Lord, and I want to live for the Lord. I, don't, uh, I miss out enough, so I want to uh, remain focused on on Him, so He can continue, continue on working through my life and on this journey, this wonderful journey. Uh, so that keeps me single to looking up to His appearing, and that. That, that encourages me and hopefully that will encourage others and and the, and the Lord's grace will be magnified in in our lives uh, but if we take our eye off that we we can be like coals out of the fire and then we then we're no good for ourselves or, or the Lord so I'd like to encourage anybody to, to to do something to do something positive in your life but the most positive thing you you can do is live for the Lord, live for, live for others, live to share the gospel, in any any way you, you're led to, any way you feel you're led to to do to do it, because once you stop doing it, you, you still got to pick up your cross the next day and do it again, and that that can be difficult, especially if you're very you're, you're building the Lord's building your confidence, building your, you know feeling healing you bringing you to an understanding because you may not see the uh, wood for the trees so if there's anyone out there like that uh, take courage um i'll leave some scriptures that are, that are comforting that i've search your scriptures because that's how the lord speaks to you. you you cry to the lord open the open your bible and the Holy Spirit's always communicating with, with our spirits where, where we stray, where we put our foot to the left, where we put our foot to the right. The Holy, if you're listening, the Holy Spirit's saying that's wrong and that's wrong. And then the Holy Spirit's telling you what you're doing right. And that's how we grow, by living by faith daily, on a daily basis. And there's so many things to remember and there's so many things that that you learn and uh, retain. Once you uh, once you've learned it, you retain it. But if you let go, you can lose what you've retained, and you have to rebuild. That has to be rebuilt up again, and that, that can. That's very difficult. It's diff It's hard to get back up. It's hard living, living for Christ. It's not easy, but it is a blessing. So if we're thankful. We're forgiving. We're thankful. Thank then that brings us closer to the Lord and that opens us up to his heart, his will, his purpose and God's purpose and then that will take, that will carry us away, that's the light burden, that will carry us away from our own problems. Living for someone else is, is a remedy for your own pain and it's it is selfish to take your eye off that. Everything that takes our eye off Christ is sin. Sin is unbelief. So when we're not looking to the Lord and doing wrong, we're sinning. We're in we're not we're we're in unbelief. And the Lord said um, a wonderful wonderful thing. Uh, there's enough evil in the day. So when you've got a serious uh, life problem, you you can only really take one day at a time, and not to worry about the future, not to fear. Um, n not to be afraid to to live for the Lord, but to take that step of faith and go and do something, will lift you. The Lord will lift you, and bring you to to His service and joy, and and to the to the experience of that life, that wonderful, the graciousness and glory of God, serving solely His purpose. So anything good we do in our life is solely down to the Lord. It's not down to our, down to our works. Our, our works are sin. We put our foot one way or the other way, or 
that's where that's our works when we get it right we get it right because the Lord's helped us get it right and that's that's the wonderful thing for the believer to experience and sharing so we should be remember to be thankful for our sufferings and what we, what the Lord's paid to redeem us and to bring us into that joy into his, into his heart into our father's heart into the kingdom so I want to leave that to be hopefully be an encouragement and a lift for somebody I think I'm going to close with a prayer. Um, gracious Father, we thank you for everything we've experienced our life, your creation and your plan of salvation, the, the precious blood of our Lord Jesus Christ, his death, burial and resurrection. Father, I pray that we may pray, pray often and pray for the world, be thankful for all the world, all, the, all, that's, all that the, takes place in the world to be thankful for the experience and to pray for the lost souls to be safe, your word to have free course, to pray for our brothers and sisters, to pray for one another and to remember, be, we pray to be reminded by your grace to help us in our, in our walks, to be more loving, to be more thankful, to be forgiving and, and to be more resilient on a daily basis that we may be faithful, we may experience your joy and not displease you. We pray. We pray that we may forgive one another, forbear one another, and be kind and sober and temperate in in our lives. We pray for your leading. We pray for your appearing, and we pray that your word have free course, and that uh, people would be brought, and they will seek your hope, and the gospel will spread. We pray that we may spread your word in our weaknesses, in our strengths, we pray we may, whatever we do, we pray you will bless us for, uh, and encourage us that we may be encouraged to shine as lights, to share your word in boldness, we pray for, to be emboldened further, to be refreshed each day, we pray, we may pray for those that we perhaps have difficulty with, or perhaps we don't like, or we pray we may pray for your love and your grace to teach us how we should love and behave. We pray for the those in the world who uh, we don't like and those uh, the wickedness and uh, the things that are done in secret. We pray for those souls uh, that you died to save. We pray that they will um, come to repentance. We pray for your will, Father. We pray for our nation. We pray for every nation that they may hear your word. But we pray for all, each other. We pray. Help us pray for and remember those um, brothers and sisters that are suffering, that are persecuted, that are struggling. Help us pray and. Uh, be led by your heart and what you desire for us to do. Lead us in our, our faith, Father. We thank you and I ask you, Father, and for a blessing upon my brothers and sisters and to help them in their lives, whether they are uh, struggling with uh, the fearing for their lost family, fearing for their selves to not be able to function or whatever the problem we pray that you will meet our needs and help us and encourage us to love one another as you'd, you'd have us and I ask Father and pray in the name of Jesus Christ, Amen.